Hi. Good morning. It's a, a great pleasure to be back in live event and to have the opportunity again to speak to a, an audience, okay, and uh, be away from the, the remote meetings, okay. Okay. Um, I am Jonet. I am CEO from Voice Interaction, and basically, I will be presenting our solution in terms of automatic closed caption. And uh, I will try to explain exactly the question and the, the problem in terms of automatic clo the closed captioning and what is our solution for, uh, for this kind of, of problems. Okay? Uh, the, first, the first thing that we have to understand is the, the closed captioning is a difficult task. Okay? You have different uh, problems with the, the speakers, the, the different accents. Uh, the, the sounds that are interfering and um, the fast and diverse content that you have and also the, the problem that is difficult to scale manually. Okay? When we are talking about the, the doing this kind of task manually is difficult to, to, to do the scaling when you have different kind of contents and you want to, to do it not only for something as the life uh, but also for the, the offline content. Okay? Uh, basically, for, for the broadcasters, there is the need to, to make 24-7, okay? That means you have to work all around the clock, okay? And you need to provide a service that should be good, accurate, and always on, okay? Uh, also, in terms of the content that are online, that means are a huge amount of content that is online and that you have to provide uh, the closed captioning to, to give uh, some accessibility in terms of that content, okay? Uh, and is a service that we have to, to, to tailor to the different kind of clients and also to the different um, uh, stations, okay? Uh, one of the things that is relevant is the fact that we need to do some automation, okay? We need to transfer this task to a full automatic process, okay? And this creates some, some, uh, uh, some challenges, okay? We need to have a higher level in terms of accuracy. We are talking about some, something that should be up to 95 to 100%, okay? And there is also here what we call the, the word right compared with the, the NER analysis that we do in terms of the, the, the system, okay? Uh, normally, there is no margin for error. Basically, we have to provide as accurate as possible. There is no, no way that we can have some errors on, on this, okay? Uh, we have some, some environment that is, that is changing every day. That means we have new words that are appearing. That means you need to create some kind of uh, features that enable the system to learn and to getting to access to these new, new words. Uh, normally, we have some limited vocabulary. That means the systems are working. Uh, that means they have a fixed vocabulary. They are limited. And for example, when we are looking to, to the English, you have 1.2 different, uh, 1.2 million different words. And normally, this is not compatible to have a system working on top of this. That means you have to, to have a vocabulary of 200,000, 250,000 to work on top of that. Okay. Uh, and also the kind of programs. One thing is working on news, okay? That means you have a, a kind of content that is uh, in some way with a, a, a good behavior, okay? Compare when we are talking about entertainment and other kind of programs as sports, uh, where the kind of events are a little bit more aggressive, okay? And you need to have some, uh, some way to, to comply with, um, with that, okay? Uh, when we are uh, talking about the technology, that means when we are talking about automatic speech recognition, we see a large improvement in the, the, last, uh, the last years, okay? And this is basically derived from two different points. One is in terms of CPU, okay? That means we have faster CPU, okay? With access to more memory, okay? And that means uh, the things have been improving 
uh, a lot, okay? I was just talking with a client and we are discussing latency and the latency is always depending of the clock of the machine, okay? If you have a good machine with a good clock, that means you can work faster and you have a low latency. Without a, a good clock, that means it's a little bit more difficult to have a low latency, okay? And that is the point, okay? Besides the fact that we have uh, a, a large, uh, a good CPUs, the fact that we have large amount of data, okay? And this is crucial at these days because basically we are developing algorithms based on uh, uh, neural networks, okay? With different kind of degrees. And these neural networks are able to learn on data, okay? With more data, with good data, okay? We can have better models. And that's it, okay? And basically the fact that we have faster CPUs with more data give us the opportunity to develop new algorithms, to use this data more correctly, with more quality, and at the end we've got a better accuracy, okay? And that's the point, okay? Um, one of the things that is also relevant in terms of this kind of, of automatic systems are the fact they are speaker independent, okay? That means there is no dependence from the speaker. That means I can have different kind of uh, speakers with different kind of dialects, with different kind of accents. And what the system is to do is to be able to learning that kind of variations, okay? Not only in terms of the speaker, in terms of the audio, but also from creating uh, ways to improve the vocabulary, to increase the vocabulary and to have better models. That means it's not just a question of having uh, uh, good audio, but also creating good models that are able to respond to, to this. And, uh, for example, from our side, what we do is creating some uh, specific models. That means, that means the idea is not having a model that fits all, okay? Having specific models to sports or to entertainment or to news and to be able to creating these models and to updating these models with uh, quality, okay? And all with all these kind of conditions, okay, is, is, is the time to have a full automatic system and running, okay? That means uh, what we can do is creating a, a, a full process that is uh, automated. That means we are crawling the web, we are getting the new words, we can see exactly what kind of new information is available, okay? Just looking to that information, uploading the vocabularies, uploading the models, and creating new models with that information, okay? And this can be do, uh, fully automatic. We have to put in, in place some machine learning algorithms that are able to distinguish what is new, what we can use from that information, and creating the models uh, daily, and with this new uh, uh, information, okay? That means uh, also you can, with this kind of automatic systems, bring access uh, in terms, not only in terms of accessibility, but also in terms of contents, okay? The fact that you can have some knowledge from that kind of content because you can do the transcription and you can use that information from the closed caption together with the, the timestamps to have access to all this kind of information and make this available to all, okay? That is one of the, my, the, the main, main points, okay? Uh, from uh, what we are talking here is about speech recognition. We know that the speech interface will be uh, everywhere, okay? Not only in terms of accessibility, but also, for example, what we have here in terms of media monitoring, uh, assembly transcription, the call centers, medical, uh, the spoken content, uh, lectures in the cars, in house, everyone, every, every place will see the speech interface and this will be relevant. Uh, and we can see different areas where, where the, the speech recognition can have uh, a huge uh, contribution on, uh, on this, okay? Uh, the, other, the other point that is relevant is the fact that we are talking about uh, machine learning, AI-driven uh, technology, and the fact that we are working on different areas, okay? Not only in terms of acoustic processing, okay? And basically what we are talking here is about looking to the audio, understanding what is the content of the audio, okay? 
Uh, also in terms of the speakers, okay? That means you have to, to define when there is a change of speaker, when we have a different speaker turn, when we have speaker clustering, okay, on, t on top of this. Also speaker identification, put the name of the speaker when they are speaking, okay, using these models in terms of doing the speaker identification. And also in terms of event detection, okay, Musi music, applauses, every, uh, every kind of event that appears in the audio, you want to do this kind of identification, okay. What we have now is the deep neural networks, okay, that are basically on the, on the base ground of these uh, systems, using in terms of acoustic model, speaker independent confidence measures in order to generate the information that is necessary for the next step, that is the language modeling, the, the, the fact that you are creating vocabularies and language models appropriating to specific areas. And the combination the combination of this different process in the fact that you are modeling the, uh, the, the acoustic conditions, the audio, you are modeling the speaker, you are doing the identification and the, the definition in terms of the, the acoustic model in terms of the phonemes for that specific language and also in terms of the, the way that you are uploading the vocabulary and creating the conditions to have the best model as possible to that specific task. And this, the combination of these that are basically uh, AI driven to, to, to this. Uh, we at Voice Interaction, uh, we have some proprietary technology and uh, basically this is related with the way that we train the models and how we do develop the system, not only in terms of the, the training material and training models, but also in terms of the different parts, in terms of the, the search that we do in terms of natural language processing because we have to analyze the kind of output that we are providing and to be in control of that output okay is normally there are some words that normally we have to take out okay because uh, it can be offensive and the system is able because it's uh, working on top of that words to be removing that kind of words okay uh, also, uh, in terms of the, the part of software engineering, okay? That means we are talking about the interface that should be intuitive, should be working 24 seven, and uh, basically don't creating any kind of problems to the client and to be reliable and to be always flexible and providing the correct, um, the correct output. Uh, what we have uh, from voice interaction, what we have the solution uh, for real-time closed captioning, okay, is this solution, the audio image media. Uh, basically, in terms of uh, workflow, is uh, for real-time closed captioning, okay, uh, is a solution running or deployed on-premises, is running on-premises on the client uh, uh, infrastructure, okay, and also we want to be compliant with the, the CC uh, uh, regulations, okay. This overview, this is uh, a kind of uh, a simple overview of the system. Basically, what we do is doing a capture process where we get the access to the inputs. That means we can recording different kind of inputs. Basically, if you have SDI, if you have just audio, if you have digital audio, if you have a live streams, okay? That means you can work in whatever kind of inputs that you, you have. And now what we do is the transcription, okay? We have some, uh, the technology, and basically the premises is to have high accuracy, low latency, uh, and the possibility to have new models with daily uh, vocabulary updates, okay? This is also relevant, and uh, sometimes what we do, and we have improving this kind, the fact that we have the possibility also to add translation on the process, okay? And for example, here in the West, we have a lot of clients that need to have the Spanish and the English at the same time, okay? And what we do is, you are working in one language, we translate to the other language in real time, in life, okay? And that means I can provide the two streams of outputs of the closed caching in both of the language, okay? And this is uh, relevant for different kind of uh, markets. In terms of the output, what we do is just integrating to the uh, closed captioning encoder and to provide that kind of information 
at the at the end of the system. And what we do, uh, we are delivering the media content with closed caption to the TV live streams, whatever there there will be the the need for uh, for that. Okay. And the idea for our platform is to provide high accuracy, low latency. Uh, on-premises system, but also translation, daily vocabulary updates, encoders, uh, and the, the communication with them, and the deliver the media content with uh, closed caption. Okay, and basically this is also an additional uh, workflow where we look to the SDE master to uh, send this information to the um, to the encoder. Okay. In terms of Offline, we have also another solution, which is uh, Audium Server, and this is basically for uh, integration in workflows when you have a, a bunch of files and you want to do the transcription of these files and generate the closed caption associated with these files. And you have one solution for live and another solution for offline when we are working on top of um, uh, file systems. Okay, and. The uh, architecture here is also simple in the fact that we have audio video inputs, we do the transcription, and we generate uh, a transcription file uh, at the end of the uh, outputs. Okay? Uh, basically, for uh, voice interaction, we, are, uh, in, we have been working for a long, long time in speech processing technologies. We have been working from the, 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 the time when we have low data, now that we have a large amount of data, and that is one of the things that are very relevant for the area, is the fact that we have uh, the ability to provide a good service in terms of the quality of the technology, the quality of the models, but also in terms of quality in terms of the software engineering. Okay. And I think it's ending my presentation. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, on premises. Yeah, basically what, what we do is uh, we have a process that creating and receiving the information, okay? And we generating a new model and you upload, we upload that model to the client that is running on premises. Uh, we, c we can do that kind of definition, can be something that is very specific to that station in the sense that there are some names, places that are local to them. Yes, yes. The model, the model should, be, should be adequate to that kind of content, but a single machine can uh, work with that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. If you have any, any questions, we are on the, 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 the stand here. We can just give you all the, all the answers to the, that. Yeah, yeah, but uh, the question is uh, trying to put the automatic system to provide you the best output as possible because if you are doing some kind of manual operation in the middle it's difficult to do this kind of mixing okay because the speeds are different okay because if you have the system and you have to provide all that kind of information with that specific uh, speed it's difficult to put some manual process in the middle okay but it's something that can be automated to do that okay okay thank you okay. <laughs>